Hey Saber fans, this is Adam from Blue Force Sabers. So I just finished doing an install on the Saber Forge Shoto chosen version. And I usually don't do in, uh, videos on these installs just because I don't really do any modifications to them besides doing the electronics on the inside. Um, but I figured I'd do, uh, start doing videos on these installs that I do and give a kind of review or perspective of, I guess from the installer side, um, in case you ever plan on doing um, installs in the future or you want to work on them yourself. Any kind of difficulties I've had doing the installs um, or just uh, just a general review of how it went and kind of how the layout is and, and to set it up and everything too if you plan on ever doing an installation of uh, a Sabre. So this was an empty hilt I received and uh, this was a Sabre I've done. Um, for this customer and I've done sabers for him in the past so I definitely wanted to uh, figure out this install for myself um, I'm doing an install on these tiny hilts uh, this entire hilt is about 8.25 inches so it's pretty slim it's pretty small um, it compared to the ultra sabers it's definitely a smaller in diameter size and when you're doing an install on those um, it's less to work with so I make chassis for these and the chassis I have is actually a pretty small size it's actually 1.11 inches is the size of a chassis you would use on the side on the inside of this which is smaller than an ultra sabers um, and this is actually a little bit more in diameter than the chassis I use on my personal sabers I make uh, they're 25 millimeters actually a little bit less than 25 millimeters on the inside um, so this is right in the middle. However, the difficulty when you, when you get into installing these uh, on the Shoto versions is the the depth that you have here to deal with. So at the emitter end, you have this is actually a really cool saber too. You have this Luke style saber, and uh, it's it's a neat saber. It's it's a really cool size and, and fun to to play with. You have the um, the emitter up here and the blade goes into this groove spot here um, so with the thin necks you don't have anything to work with as far as an install goes um, with putting the LED in here um, so it has to go in this section so you have to also bear in mind too that you have to include your resistors into this so that is always a factor um, I always like to resistor all of my LEDs the, this is an RGB, so the red, green, and blue are resistor. So that take, has to take into account of the wiring and the sizing. So basically the one inch uh, aluminum housing the LED sits in, sits about right here in these first three rings, actually a little bit further behind. Um, so then you have the resistors that sit underneath the switch. So it makes it a little more difficult and snug to get in there. Then you have the switch that recesses down into the hilt right about here and then you also have the recharge port that also recesses down into the hilt right about this area as well so you have all this area right here you're squeezing your LED your two switches and then all the wires so then what you're left with too on the install is down to this area so with these Shoto hilts um, what I found out is that the original chassis that I had to do the install on this one is um, a little too big because there is an actual ridge on the inside of this where they cut it out and it actually comes to this area. So the chassis, if you have it and you're trying to use maximize this length here, is not going to fit because it actually won't go past this lit. So it causes the speaker to get too far into where the grooves and the... Um, for the, the, the palm on the slide and, and screw into the hilt. So that chassis was out. So I had to modify another one to make it smaller to be able to fit into this area. And then I did a hardwired battery up to the recharge port. Um, so overall, um, I got a CFX board into this with a rechargeable battery using the kill key and recharge port here. Um, and then I had to go with a smaller speaker so it would be able to fit into the pommel a little bit more because the speaker fits right into about this area here 
So if I've used a full 28 millimeter speaker, it wouldn't be able to fit into the pommel area. So we had to reduce that to get it into this area. Perfectly loud and, and works. Uh, I think it's just as loud as a 28 millimeter bass speaker, but I went down to a 24 millimeter three watt Veco bass speaker, which sounds really good as well in this. I don't know if it's because of the resonance down here, um, but it, it sounds perfectly uh, uh, great as the 28 millimeter. So we just have a regular uh, 12 millimeter uh, switch here. Um, so that's that's pretty much the install of this. Like I said, it's a great little saver. Um, and then you have your cover tech wheel too here on the side. But overall, I definitely like the design of it. Um, it's got a great one handed uh, hilt here. Um, so like I said, they're not the uh, saber forge hilts are basically the same diameter on the outside, the standard ones. Um, but it's a cool little saber, just a little difficult to install if you think about doing the install yourself. Now, if you're not aware, um, Saber Forge actually sells a plug and play that you can do, um, but I'm not sure how you'd be able to get that to fit because there's just a lot of wires that you have to run and squeeze into the section. Maybe others were able to do it, um, be able to get it fitted in. I haven't tried because I don't, I don't use plug and play installs, obviously, but it would probably be pretty difficult to fit in here if be able to fit in here at all. So just something to keep in mind if you ever plan on doing your own. Um, but so let's fire it up so we can hear what it sounds like with the uh, CFX in there. Hello there. So I set the first one as a uh, Kenobi font. All guests have arrived. So you can see it's still plenty loud. The smaller speaker. And then all aware of a CFX board. You got the cool smooth swing. Blaster. Lock up and everything. Your cool spectral mode. So you can rotate through all your different colors. Lock that back into the green. Also your blade profiles. You want your flicker. Five of those loaded in here. I always like to do just a slight flicker effect on it. Press the button, lock that in. Force effects. You're wasting your time. And you have your backtracks as well, double press. And then you still have the awesome effects of the saber as well. Double press to turn it off. Pull down the buttons, switch to the next font. Sound bank selection. So you hear the prompt. Hold that in to lock it in. And you have a good radar font. Show off one more font here. Like I said, it's a really super fun saber to swing around. It definitely, because of that small size too, just definitely has a different feel than uh, some of your other sabers. Princess Leia font. There you go, that is a 
Shoto Saber by Saber Forge, the chosen version. Um, hope you enjoyed the review, and if you planned on installing it, um, maybe it gave you a couple of tips and insight into doing an install of your own. Always like to see others get into installing, or at least trying it. Um, doesn't have to be something you, you do as uh, making money or anything like that, but just for the fun of it, installing your own saber is, is a pretty cool thing to do and is unique. And then you can really call it your own and just make it something that you've, you've done and kind of made a little hobby out of. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the review. And as always, check back often, subscribe and like, and take care, and God bless.